instilling a work ethic in me, instilling a self-sustained drive in me, I want to work hard and to, to expect to provide for my family and to provide for my, you know, my daughters and, and provide just in general for my community. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. So uh, welcome, Ben, to Feel Good Fatherhood. Uh, you were sharing with me that this is your favorite quote. Can you can you jump into this? Tell me a little bit about this. Yes, yeah, Jason. I, I, I think. Um, well, actually, one of the things I'm going to I'm trying to instill in my daughters is is resilience. I think resilience um, and being able to face adversity, and and um, uh, you know you know take you know take a take a lick and keep on taking is going to be the uh, the one characteristic that separates you know, successful people from, from people that are not going to be so successful going forward. And so I think everybody got punched in the mouth basically with, uh, with, with the COVID uh, pandemic and the COVID economic, um, you know, upheaval and, and just life upheaval. And, and really uh, out of that in the last couple of years, um, you know, folks that, that were able to pivot and able to deal with it well are doing better actually. And mm-hmm. folks that were not able to pivot or, you know, were not able to adapt or are doing, you know, a lot of people are really suffering, um, uh, you know, physically, mentally, financially, otherwise. How have you lived this? What did you specifically do more from the angle of how did you lead the way right, for your daughters? Cause that's, that's sort of the theme of what you're, of what you're saying here. Yeah. So I've, I've tried to share, you know, and they're young. So, um, you know, I have a two year old and, and, a, and a seven and now a seven year old new, newly, minted seven-year-old, but, but I have tried to share with them some of, uh, some of my business, some of my business stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, with that, that quote, that, that famous Mike Tyson quote, uh, when we started our business in 2010, we started it with a couple of, uh, a couple of ideas, um, that, that we were going to be able to, you know, provide people with health insurance. Okay. Um, affordable health insurance. And we, we went into the business with an understanding of what the law was. Well, a couple of months later, we got punched in the mouth, almost uh, literally, um, with the uh, the Affordable Care Act law, which immediately made my you know my uh, five thousand dollar investment and all the time that we had put in um, completely illegal. Actually, it made our, our health insurance plan illegal, um, and so I, I've tried to share stories like that with my certainly with my older daughter, and I will share you know share it with both of them as they as they um, come up to make sure that, you know, anytime they're coming off the, you know, coming off the basketball court, or if they're, you know, if they get uh, an answer or two wrong, you know, in, in a test that they're taking, or they don't perform as well as they want to, you know, in, in whatever environment they're in, they understand that uh, it's totally fine to make mistakes. It's, it is totally fine to not be perfect all the time, just as long as they, you know, learn from that, learn from what's happening and, and try to continue to move forward and try to, to, to continue to improve. Have you read Dr. Carol Dweck's uh, mindset? That that book. I have not. I've it not talks been. about the growth versus fixed mindset. Mm. You know, one of the one of the things that we, especially with daughters, that we say a lot is like, "Oh, you're so you're so well behaved. You're so beautiful. You're so oh, you're so cute. You're you're such a good girl." And these are all fixed traits, mm. right? A lot of us do that, and we just, by nature, do that, as opposed to saying, you worked really hard on that. Oh, you put a lot of effort into your outfit today, or you did well by showing up, right? You put the effort into showing up well for the adults, or you did this, you had a great conversation, uh, those kind of elements. So the fix versus growth, uh, I think that'd be great for the Feel Good Father that's listening right now. Hey, you should download it. Go read it. It's a great book. It's wonderful. It actually talks about raising kids and stuff like that, and uh, Ben just shared a really great example about uh, effectively, unconsciously executing on that idea. So uh, this is wonderful. What else are you identifying that you don't want for your daughters to take on? So, so actually, you, you just you just identified it. <laughs> so I I, I fortunately uh, have some you know uh, what, what most people think are some really attractive. Uh, daughters okay and so they hear it all the time oh you're cute or you know you're so beautiful or you know i like your hair uh you know etc um and those are all that's great that will quite frankly help them very likely with their 
careers and you know getting into certain doors you know and, and and having certain opportunities that that let's be frank about it that would probably help okay but i i tell them all the time that is not the most important thing what what is in your head and what's in your heart and how you treat people those are things that you can develop mm. though and those are the traits that i'm always going to look at when i am thinking about you and um, and telling you how great of a job you're doing I'm not going to tell you you're doing a great job because you're cute or you're beautiful or your hair looks nice. I'm going to tell you you're doing a great job because you, uh, as my daughter did actually uh, last year, she, um, one of one of the people in her classroom, uh, had they had an accident mm -hmm. and a lot of the kids around them, around her, uh, laughed at her basically. And my daughter was the only one that went up and basically kind of took her, you know, to the teacher and, uh, and basically supported her, you know, fully. And now that little you know young lady is is my one of my daughter's best friends basically um and uh, and, and i heard about this not because i not because the teacher told me basically that the, the the young lady's um uh, parents told me that my daughter had done such a great job and that's that that made me feel like a fantastic father um which i i don't always feel like but that that hearing that uh sort of unsolicited um third party validation about your kid uh, doing something great that doesn't have to do with those fixed traits is, is really uh, rewarding. How did you come? How did you come to the decision to choose that route over another route? So I, I think I think I've seen it. I think I've seen examples where people are um, they are physically beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn Monroe. You know, it was physically very attractive, physically very beautiful, but she was broken inside, right? And ended up having really a, a horrible, if you look at the kind of the, the, the full, uh, the full um, uh, synopsis of her life, she had a horrible life and, and a horrible end, um, probably because way too much value was put on the fixed portion mm -hmm. and not nearly enough value was put on her as an individual and seeing her as a, as a human being, um, and as a, hopefully an intelligent human being that was developing and and, and getting better um, and maturing all the time. So I think seeing examples like that is it, it, sort of a cautionary tale for me mm. um, with, with my with my daughters. Awesome. What uh, I love this piece. I love the idea of taking examples from the outside learning from them, right? That's, a, a, in general, that's a, a great trait of wisdom, right? Learning from other people's experience, being able to internalize that and then create some sort of lesson showing up well as a father, uh, that is, I think, something very key, right? We need to be aware, we need to be paying attention, we need to watch and monitor the friend groups, right? We need to watch and monitor the school, we need to watch and monitor social the media. neighborhood. Yeah. yeah, social media, yeah. <laughs> the social media neighborhood. Yeah, talk about that. <laughs> Uh, so, so thankfully I don't have to talk about that too much yet. Cause they, you know, they're, they're two years old and seven years old. However, they, they are very aware of what, you know, what, or at least my seven-year-old is very aware of what, t you know, TikTok is and, and she's, um, you know, aware of, you know, taking selfies and, and, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, being cute for the camera and all, all that sort of stuff. And I, I think I, I cannot imagine I cannot imagine being a seven-year-old or being a seventeen-year-old with the the amount of social media and the amount of uh, just just information in general, and, and um, uh, the amount of good and also the amount of bad that that's you know really at the at your at your fingertips if you have if you have a cell phone if you have a smartphone. So um, I, I think as I as we as we go forward as, as she gets older as they both get older. I'm going to be really, um, really cognizant of what they they access, if and when they get a phone, and we're going to get it as late as possible. And then when it comes to TV, to, when it comes to television, we're typically watching, you know, maybe like a Disney movie or something along those lines. And I'm even careful in terms of what, what which Disney movies we were letting them watch, or they're watching, you know, like they're watching something like um, Alpha Blocks or Number Blocks. That right. is or PBS kids that's more educational, much more educational than it is just the entertainment. Um, uh, and, and, and all those shows and all, all the TV shows that I do let them watch, and don't, we don't let them watch a lot, 
want to make sure that uh, the the values that we think are important uh, in terms of treating people well and being courteous and being nice, all those values are being instilled even through TV and through the media that they may uh, may come across. I've had a couple other guests come on that have talked about how they very intentionally built specific values and very intentionally educated and created those traits or are working to create those traits, those ways of being that, that identity in their children. What are the big lists of values that you have and how do you uh, impart those to the next gen? Yeah. So I want to definitely want them to be resilient and that I'm always working on that. We're always working on that. I want them to be uh, as intelligent as they can be. Mm -hmm. But I also want them to, to work hard to, uh, I want them to be well-educated and, and to, to value education, to value knowledge, to value um, awareness of other, other people and other, um, other thoughts and other ideas um, so that they, you know, they don't think they know all the answers. I, I want them to, to know as many of the answers as they can know, of course, but I do want them to value other people's thoughts and so along those lines, I want them to be, and we try to train them to be courteous as much as possible to say thank you and to say please and, you know, to say, you know, you're welcome and to, um, uh, to greet people and, and be, as, uh, be as socially adept as, as possible, have as many soft skills as possible. Because I think uh, I was just I was on, a, on a webinar yesterday and um, um, uh, one of the quotes that was shared was that, you know, we, we are in the most technologically advanced and connected age we've ever been in. And people are automating tasks all the time. <laughs> you know, wh whether you go into McDonald's now to, you know, to order, you know, to order at, at the panel instead of ordering with a human or you go and get some groceries, you know, there, 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 there's certainly, you know, lots of shops in, you know, the U S or Canada, for example, where you can't, you cannot get a human to check you out anymore. You know, there, there's a human there, for like 13 different bays, you know, to make sure you don't have a problem or, you know, check your ID. But, um, you know, for the most part, the, the, the experience is automated. So what's going to become more and more and more important as we go forward is it's going to be the soft skills and it's going to be the human touch that you can bring by having um, emotional intelligence and having EQ and uh, having empathy and, um, uh, you know, being able to understand understand the uh, the, the event understand the situation you're in and being able to talk to people. Yeah. And, and those are all skills that, that I want my daughters to have in, in spades. Got it. Uh, how about your life? What kind of environment did you grow up with? And, and really from the perspective of what did you, how did you grow up? What did you want? What did you not want for your life? And then how is that showing up for you, you know, in your marriage and as a parent? So one thing that I probably don't give my father nearly enough credit for is, uh, or the one trait that I don't give him enough credit for is the, the ability to, to work and work hard. Mm. <laughs> we, we, uh, we grew up outside of, of outside Columbia, South Carolina, in a place called Lugoff, South Carolina. Um, it, it still has, uh, our, our sort of family house still has a, a big cow pasture across the street essentially. And so we had a little farm, we had some goats and ducks and chickens and so forth. And we, my dad, actually, he did have an entrepreneurial spirit, sort of a side hustle spirit spirit. So we, uh, he had a little cleaning business, for example, that we, me and my brother as really young kids, I remember when I was like five or six years old, going along with him to, to go, you know, clean out a doctor's office and that sort of thing. And then as we got older, he, he brought us along to do landscaping uh, and, 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 you know, and, and uh, you know, la lawn uh, mowing and, and things along those lines. And that, that became the business that we, uh, we sort of were, were involved in during the summers for the last couple of summers in high school. And so I, I credit him for, uh, he, although I, I certainly did not give him credit at the time we were working, you know, hard in hundred degree weather, but I, I really do credit him for uh, instilling a work ethic in me and instilling a, a, a sort of a, a self-sustained drive in me to um, to to want to work hard and to to expect to to work and you know pro provide for my family 
and to provide for my, you know, my daughters and, and provide just in general for my community. So I think that's that that um that characteristic of just work ethic and, and making sure that I'm going to provide is, is really important for me. And that's been important for me for me in the marriage and and, and as a father. One of the things that is in the popular conscious right now is that that traditional trait is not always received positively. But I, when we look at the psychology, when we look at the expectations, right, of, of the wife and the expectations on, on the father and the husband, it's that there is an expectation of providing. There is an expectation of, of growing, of ambition, of the work ethic. And uh, for the new feel-good fathers that are listening, right, you're adding to your life. Right. When you got a you have a, a kid on the way, you're getting married, whatever it happens to be, you're adding. You're adding to your life. And uh it can have it's up to you whether it's a multiplicative effect and you and you go up like a hockey stick, you know, if in whatever measurement you want to look at, happiness, joy, uh connection, uh even financial, or whether it's gonna be a, a detractor, right? Whether it's gonna be uh, ex exponential uh taking away. Uh, work ethic, love it. Self-sustaining, really kind of interested in this. Can you talk a little about why self-sustaining? You and I have talked about this on a handful of other occasions. Let's talk about this in 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 this context. What do you mean by it? Yeah, and and I, I did want to clarify a point before we get to the self-sustaining uh, characteristic. So. I, to your point, I, I'm I'm definitely kind of old school. I, I I absolutely do think that that I as the guy in the relationship or you know as as a spouse in the relationship should should help bring you know food, bring uh, the bacon, bring the bread to the table. However, everybody in, in the in the green household is work is going to work, man. You know, yeah. honestly, everybody it, 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 from my perspective, everybody in the household should bring should bring the work to the table, if you will. So if you're, if you were staying at home, that's great. That you, you, you need to help like, like keep the home up. You need to, you know, you need to, you need to help, um, you know, help with the kids. You need to help with, you need to like bring, bring effort to the table. Cause I, I, I think one of the things, um, one of the main reasons actually, Jay, that I did not get married and, and this is going to be, this may be a little bit controversial, but one of the main reasons that I was concerned about, um, about marrying, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a Japanese woman from my time, my long uh, eight years in Japan was because I was concerned that my, uh, you know, if my wife were Japanese, she might fall back into a traditional role where traditionally Japanese guys, they go to work, they're out the door at seven o'clock in the morning. Some of those guys will come back until midnight, basically. Okay. Uh, on Saturdays, they maybe one Saturday out of, out of traditionally out of, you know, four, they may be at home, you know, kind of milling about the other three out of the four, they're they're, you know, they're playing golf or something, you know, they, they're not around doing the thing. I wanted, I, I, I wanted a marriage. I wanted a relationship where I was actually absolutely bringing, you know, some bread to the table, but ideally my wife uh, was as well, bringing some bread to the table. And we're both heavily involved with, uh, with the parenting of our kids, spending time with our kids. And, um, and, and then I also wanted to make sure, and, and this is something I'll instill I'm instilling in my daughters is, you know, you take care of your clothes, for example, you know, you put your clothes in the hamper, you, you, you know, you, you put your clothes in the, in the, in the, in the laundry, um, you take care of your trash, you put your, you know, your, um, your food and your, or your containers up by the sink. And as they get older, they're going to be doing the laundry. They're going to be doing the dishes. They're going to be taking care of household chores, um, uh, et, et cetera. Cause I, I think it's really important for everybody to be involved and for everybody to be a part of that 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 work ethic, and I, I think that I think that instilling that on a and making sure that's sort of a, a habit on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, that's what led me to have sort of a self or helped me have sort of a self sustained drive, an internal drive to um, to to be to be great at what I'm what I'm doing. There's so many things in everything that you just said that are really fantastic. Number one, you identified uh, 
you knew what kind of life you wanted to have. You knew the kind of marriage you wanted to have, the kind of relationship you want to have, you wanted to have, and you built that and you created it and you set that expectation. And I'm sure that there might be, you might be able to help a feel good father understood, uh, sorry, understand what that conversation looks like. How do you set that up? You had that same expectation of contribution, responsibility. Uh, I think about it always. I used to do uh, Lindy hop. I used to do uh, swing dancing. So jazz dance, uh, partner dancing. And one of the things that we would always say is that there's a really big difference in a partner who is carrying their own weight mm. and then dancing with the other person versus, versus, uh, I was a lead traditionally the lead, you know, versus a follow that wanted me to pull her along. There's a, there's a difference in the physicality of what I had to do with my body, a difference in what was capable of being created as far as like feeling the music and, and, and the self-expression. But it was always the way that I understood that was keeping your feet. And when you were talking about the chores and the responsibility and even uh, your spousal arrangement of everybody working, everybody contributing, there was a, your, your complete units. There's a value of being a complete self-sustained unit coming together, you know, cause one plus one equals three or five. All right. Love that. Great idea. Yep. And, and, and on the one plus one equals three or, you know, the two plus two equals five uh, deal. It's if you're doing it on a daily, weekly monthly basis as we've been uh, been trying to do as much as possible you know with, with my with my wife with my kids and also with my business right um einstein is credited with saying that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world uh, mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not sure if there 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 uh, uh there's controversy as to whether or not he said it or not but uh it, it's a it's a brilliant it is a brilliant quote because you're not just talking about compound interest in your bank account. It, it's also compounding. There's compounding that takes place with your relationships, with your with your spouse, right? With your friends, mm -hmm. right? With us, right? Um, with your kids, certainly, absolutely. It's it, it could be negative compounding or it could be positive compounding, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's also compounding that certainly has taken place with my business where I never would have imagined 13 years later it being where it is now compared to, you know, where it was is just a little side hustle out of our, you know, out of my closet, you know, 13 years ago. So um, it, it's, it's important kind of along with the, 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 the resilience is important to make sure that you're, I, I think maybe the most important thing I can do is develop is to help my daughters develop habits mm. that are hopefully, you know, daily, weekly, monthly that help them to continually um, be a little bit hungry for for improvement and continue to improve and continue to get better and also to ideally share those gifts those talents um and you know and share in the, the kind of the common abundance with 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 their family with their community uh with the world how are you leading the way as a father right now in in that learning in that learning i uh so they get to see me read a good bit they get to see me um, working a good, a good bit. They actually come to the office. They, one of their one of their favorite places they, they like to come to is, is the office. Actually, now it may have to do with the with the, some of the chocolate and candy that they eat here sometimes. Um, but uh, but yeah, they've been to my, my offices. Uh, you know, both in South Carolina, you know, and, and here here in Nashville. Um, and they uh, and I, and I talk to them about the work that I'm doing. And, and, and my daughter sometimes kind of unsolicited will, will, um, talk about my work and say, Hey, you know, did you, did you do this? Or is this how you, you know, help this person with, you know, their insurance and so forth. And so even though it's sort of a rudimentary understanding right now, it's, it's still a baseline of understanding that a daddy is going to work. Daddy is trying to help people. Um, and also daddy is, um, helping along with mommy, mommy contributes a lot financially too. Daddy and mommy are going to work, going to these meetings. They are learning these different processes or learn, you know, getting these different certificates so that they can provide um, for, for us as a family. And also so we can have, so that we can enjoy our lives as well and have some fun and go, you know, go to Disney World, you know, go to Canada, you know, hopefully, you know, go to New York, you know, et cetera. Do you anchor that? Uh, do you anchor the rewards to the work? I, I try to, yeah, yeah, I, I'm trying to, because I, I think uh, Tom Brady uh, talked a little bit about this with his his kids. It's really difficult for for his kids to understand what's normal. 
Right. Right. <laughs> Cause he's probably got, you know, like five to 10 people in his household, you know, helping them with all manner of all manner of things all the time. His kids probably get chauffeured around all over the place, that sort of thing. So, you know, he, he tries to create, he tries to create situations that are normal uh, you know, like, you know, like them cutting the grass or something so that they can be, be anchored somewhat in, in reality. And obviously I'm not at a Tom Brady, Tom Brady wealth level or, or resources level, but we do have folks come into the house sometimes to help with dishes or laundry, for example, or to help, you know, with kind of a once a month sort of cleaning and everything. And I do want them, I, I want my daughters to understand that, you know, it's, first of all, it's not free. Secondly, we're lucky that we can afford to do that. Third, the, the reason we, we do some of that sometimes is so that I, daddy can go be the best insurance, you know, uh, guy or financial advisor or, you know, uh, or, you know, career developer that I can be in, in, in those couple of hours that I save. And that's why we're, that's why we're doing, that's why we're doing it. Um, uh, but it is not, it's not free. It costs money. It takes uh, it takes hard work to be able to pay for for that, and, uh, and it's all really toward it's all really for the betterment of the family and in our, our our lives, and um, and then also I try to make sure that they understand that these folks that are providing these services are super valuable and should be highly valued and well compensated. And it is, it's honorable work. And quite frankly, it's work that I did when I was in high school and college. Love that. A lot of what we're talking about right, right now is optimizing finances, mm. right? And it doesn't, it's, I think the important thing to understand here, feel good father, as you're listening to this, is that this is about the fruit of that labor. This is about the reaping of those seeds that you're sowing. And in this particular situation, it's about having, creating the abundance and spreading it. There's, there's definitely a, a contribution, a service side here to the paradigm of, and if we were to listen again to what Ben was saying is that he has a privilege, he's privileged to be able to provide and honoring these people that are helping him and, and privileged to have the lifestyle and the opportunities that are present there. And so uh, that is uh, fantastic. And I think it's a great way. We were actually just talking about this before about getting to versus having to. Mm. And um, I was recently, uh, before before this, I was talking with another buddy of mine about a handful of people that I follow. You know, for me, it's like, it's, uh, it was, I think it was Jay-Z that said, when I wake up in the morning and I'm breathing, I'm just grateful. I'm happy that I'm grateful. And when we look at his life and what he's been through, you know, and, and I think about it, like if we look at all the death that's been in his life, mm. you know, how could you not be grateful just to be breathing? Mm. Um, uh, and that's, that's wonderful. That's great. You do have this expertise in optimizing finances. Uh, you're the author of Global Superstar, right? You just mentioned that you had spent eight years, you had spent eight years in Japan. So you've lived abroad. Walk us through how a feel good father could make better financial decisions for themselves. That's a great, that's a great question. And I, I think that the, the first way they can make better financial decisions for themselves is to, to not try to reinvent the wheel. Um, I, I wish, I wish I, and so the second way, kind of quickly on that and, and thanks to fantastic podcasts like yours um uh is, is to either find a mentor a financial mentor or mentors um that know what they're talking about they they are they they're worth more than you okay they have uh, more financial wealth than you do they may have uh one for example male or female may have expertise in you know how do you, how do I maximize my 401k? What should I do with my 401k, 403b, 401a at my, at my job? Okay. Um, or if I'm a solopreneur, what should I do with my SEP IRA or simple IRA, you know, through my, you know, through my business? One mentor may have expertise in real estate, for example, or crypto, for example, 
one mentor, uh, you know, I wish I had found someone like this. I'm trying to become, I'm actually becoming uh, more of a, more of a mentor for this now. One mentor may have expertise in um, how do you utilize uh, cash value, whole life, whole life cash value policies as sort of supplemental retirement accounts, okay, to reduce taxes and to have, you know, have some, some freedom and flexibility there. Or um, ideally, I would have found a mentor that had expertise in dividend producing stocks. Because if I had found that person 20 years ago, we, we might not be having this conversation or we'd be having this conversation from my, my own private, you know, small island uh, <laughs> supported by my, my dividends. Um, um, and so, uh, so I, to, to answer, I, I think it's, it's really important for, for feel good fathers, men, women in general, especially as they're content, as, as they're beginning or trying to improve their, their, their careers and, and, and improve their finances. It's really important to not reinvent the wheel and, and find, uh, find a mentor. I, ideally you have someone that you can actually speak to, speak with, um, like some of my clients have with me now, or you, you find books, Robert Kiyosaki, you know, the Tony Robbins is, um, you know, there, there are lots of really good books. The Warren Buffett books are books about Warren Buffett, for example, or, uh, you know, Ray, Ray Dalio. Um, so you find books about these folks and you read those books and, and you figure out like how they do their investments, what do they invest in, et cetera. And then there are, there are a load of really good podcasts now. I mean, if you want to dig into dividend producing stocks now, I think there are like five, six, seven really good dividend producing podcasts that I've listened to myself to literally get like list of stocks and ETFs and, uh, you know, and close in funds that I'm going to invest in actually. So um, uh, doing your own, re doing some research, but certainly trying to find mentors that can help you to, um, you know, to, you know, 20 X the speed at which you, you come up the curve in terms of knowledge, and then you can come up the curve in terms of, uh, income. So number three. So, so, um, so number three is, uh, so, uh, trying to keep it as simple as, as possible. So, you, there, there are lots of different buckets. So, for example, so I, I put my, I have money in my, my company, uh, symbol IRA, okay, and I get the match at least. I also put money in my own brokerage account, all right, to, to invest in dividend producing stocks, all right. And I'm just gonna, gonna peel the onion back here and you know look under the, let, let folks look under the hood a bit. But, um, and you know this is they can do whatever they want, but this, this is what I've kind of arrived at, um. I invest some in uh, some of these private um, REITs. These are real estate investment trusts, like Fundrise, for example. Uh, you know, th that's one to take a look at. Um, I put uh, some, and I put a decent amount into uh, cash value life insurance policies that give a a large that will give a large death benefit if something unfortunately happens to me, so that I'm taking care of my daughters and my wife, right, uh, my spouse, and my responsibilities. But if if uh, if not, then that, that cash value in the policies are building up and I can utilize that for uh, retirement income down the road, um, or I can utilize that for long-term care down the road. And then the kind of the, the uh, well, bucket I already talked about is dividend producing, uh, dividend producing stocks that, um, that, that I, I invest in money in. And then uh, the other bucket that I wish I had, I had found that, I, I got the opposite of a mentor uh, about 15 years ago with um, was is real estate. Okay. So I, I identified some really good properties 15, really almost 20 years ago now that, that would be wonderful investments that I could have held on to. And I got talked out of those investments by someone who had never made that type of investment before. The importance of making sure that you're listening to people that have walked the walk, that have already uh, the trailblazers, that have already path found their way to that solution. Yes, uh, totally get it. Yep. So that's the that's wealth creation, right? That's wealth creation. How about uh, number three? You know, preservation side. You and I have talked about a handful of other techniques you can use uh, to optimize. Uh, yeah. There's like tax location. You want to talk about those a little bit? Yep. So. So number one thing is, is, you know, making sure you're optimizing your career, right? So are, are you, are you in the correct career? 
Have you ever taken, or have you taken in the last five years, have you taken a, you know, a career, um, you know, kind of a career assessment test? I didn't until I was like 28 years old. I didn't. Okay. Um, that, that actually contributed to me dropping out of college temporarily okay, and losing my scholarship um, at, at Morehouse. All right. Cause that no one gave me, and this is, you know, 20, 25 years ago, no one gave me a career test. All right. So I thought I was, I should be a doctor. I had no idea about actually being a doctor. And then some guy came in at the end of my freshman year at Morehouse to show like what being a doctor actually means in terms of, you know, surgeries and blood and guts and all that stuff. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do that. And then I fumbled and bumbled for basically a year and lost my scholarship, you know, hung out with the wrong people and all that sort of stuff. And so if if I had had someone on the front end, ideally in, in high school or before I got to college, screen me for what I'm supposed to do, then they would have said, hey, your number one position is actually to be a, a to be a preacher. OK, you need to like be up on a pulpit, essentially um, uh, preaching. Your number two is consultative sales. OK, financial services and insurance, which is exactly what I'm doing now. OK, but it took me basically what, you know, 10, 15 years really to, to arrive there. And so one thing, one thing I love about this is that, and I want to point this out is that a lot of people, when they hear career, they think W2, mm. but what we're talking about is aptitude mm. and exercising your gifts in service of other folks, whether it's W2 or whether you're an entrepreneurship. A lot of the guests I have here on, on Feel Good Fathers, they happen to be a little bit more entrepreneurial. They happen to have their own businesses and it's okay, right? That's the path that you've taken on. That that axis is risk. It's risk aversion and responsibility. It has nothing to do with aptitude. Completely different metric. So optimizing career, great. What's uh, what's next? Yeah, so if you, if you're opti if you, if you've never thought about it before, you need to, to um, look around and figure out where you're actually located. <laughs> so a lot of people, they're born someplace. Um, and this happens less and less now, of course, because we can move around and, and you know, go to college in different towns and all. But a lot, of, a, a lot of folks don't think strategically about, is the city I'm sitting in, is it serving all the purposes that I, that I need it to serve for me right now? And if it is, then great. If it's not, then you need to do an analysis. You may need to break out a break out the Excel spreadsheet, and <laughs> I'm sure you can find one. Or you know, I can maybe put one together for you. Uh, actually, I kind of have a little guide. Uh, you need to break out. You know, uh, when it comes to taxes, when it comes to um, when it comes to like career advancement, when it comes to the kind of average salary, when it comes to home ownership or the cost of living in that city. Is this, is this a great city for me or, or, or not? And it may be a great city for you right now. Is it going to be a great city for you in 10 years? If you have a family, for example, um, or in 25 years when you want to, want to retire, may, maybe it is, maybe it's not. So just thinking st more strategically about where you're physically located, especially if, if, if where you're physically, physically located is not tied to your job um, or not tied to your career per se, that, that that's something that you need to you need to think about um, because it can it can it can make a humongous impact in terms of your network in terms of the net worth you develop if you you know if you buy real estate in the right city you can literally you know just get up you know tie your shoes go to your go to your regular job um, for 20 25 years and you look up one day and you're sitting on you know a million dollars in equity and then you can there you can take that equity cash out and look at another location, maybe in a, in a lower cost city or maybe in another country, for example, speaking of location and uh, take your million dollars and, you know, plop down, you know, a hundred grand or something for, for a really nice uh, place and then plop the other 900 grand into, you know, dividend producing stocks, for example, and live off that for the rest of your life. So just thinking strategically about your career, but also, the career in, in the city you're in uh, um, and, and making sure those, um, th those make sense um, can, can make it, this makes a huge, huge difference. And I, I never thought about this fully until I moved to a state 
that has no state income tax. Now there are, there are pros and there are cons to different states, right? And different regions, but for, for in, just in terms of uh, overall, you know, overall money, that, that's another five or 10%, maybe 15% more dollars in my pocket every year. Now, if I compound that <clears throat> for 10 or 15 or 20 years, and if I'm in the right city in terms of real estate, where I just basically sit on my real estate for 10 or 15, 20 years, and you're compounding that, that makes a humongous difference compared to maybe being in, in the wrong place. That's awesome. This is so valuable. I know that you have taught me so much in these, in these areas. And uh, for the Feel Good Father listening, if you check the show notes, we'll have a link for you. You can download, connect with Ben a little bit, uh, get that pamphlet, get that little booklet that he's talking about to help you through uh, these situations. So um, Ben has a tremendous amount to offer and he's made such a huge impact in my life. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, you did. You did. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. Before we got started, you mentioned you dropped this, this really great bomb on me and you said, hey, you just got to show up. You know, you're talking about just this importance of, of being a father. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, so I, I would not be where I am, right, without my wonderful mother. It's, you know, it's like, it's, it's, such, a, it's such a simple statement that it's, it's almost like a stupid statement, right? And so it's a simple, stupid statement. My mom, you know, my mom means everything to me. I literally would not be here on earth without my mom, but just the, um, the, just the social skills she gave me, the, um, the emphasis on education she gave me, the emphasis on English, on speaking really good English and writing and, and, uh, and reading, um, all those things just have been fundamental to any success I have had, right? But my father gave me, uh, and that father, my father figure, my father gave me an emphasis on that education as well. And, and, and um, uh, he gave me an emphasis, uh, more importantly, on kind of showing up to school showing up for my my teammates on my football team or if I was trying to run you know go out for track or basketball or whatever it is uh, he gave me an emphasis on being resilient because we we would do hard physical things sometimes uh working with him or you know from from the age of five years old on up and he gave me that he gave me a, probably most importantly as I said that, that emphasis on on working hard and just the expectation, the expectation that you're going to work. And in some respects, I wish he had, uh, of course, had uh, or given me more, uh, given more emphasis on financial literacy and on figuring out, you know, um, on figuring out what to do with your money after you make your money, right? And, but that, that's, that's where I come in with my daughters, right? And with the next generation and, and anyone I can share that information with. Uh, but, but the, that work ethic has to be there. And that's, that's probably the most important thing he instilled in me. And without that, whatever success I, I've had, I, I would not have had that. You're, you're hinting at something that I think is really critical for the feel good father journey, which is that concept of that inheritance mm -hmm. of not only what you're inheriting, but also what are you passing on mm -hmm. and what is, what is consistent and definitely a value for feel good fathers in general is you're responsible for you and the, the path that you take your life down. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that generational break, uh, where you're very grateful for the, the lessons that you've learned, the love and, and abundance that you have for that is, is fantastic. We can hear it. What did you choose not to do? What did you choose not to bring? Mm. How, how did you manifest that? Mm. And, and this this kind of this leads into our discussion about you know the the, the final portion of the optimization right because you can you can optimize your career you, ideally you can also optimize your location uh you want to optimize your finances uh, with with my with my parents both my parents super well educated my mom has a phd you know a master's degree my dad has a has a master's degree 
um, super well educated and literally in education uh, and really well regarded in, in those portions, but they did not have the financial fundamentals and, and literacy and, and, and foundation. They did not, and they did not talk about that with us um, as, uh, as, as, you know, as, as kids and, and as young adults uh, coming up. So that's, that's what I'm, I'm trying to, so I've taken, I'm taking from them and I've taken from them the work ethic and the emphasis on education and the emphasis on, on trying to be, trying to be good and trying to do good. I'm passing that to my daughters. Absolutely. But I'm also trying to add, of course, uh, uh, the fruits of my labor, right? So, and, and making sure that I'm set up with life insurance and we're set up with wills and trust properly to make sure that if something happens to me and or my wife, my daughters are taken care of financially. And then also, even without that financial, well, hopefully well-being and wellness that they'll have access to, trying to instill in them some financial literacy where they, they understand how to manage money. They understand what it takes to make money and to be financially successful on their own um, uh, and, and to, to, to sustain them themselves on their own. So that even if they, we were, even if we weren't able to give them $1 literally or pass on $1, they, they're going to have the skills. My aim is for them to have the skills so that they will be just fine by themselves independently forever. I think it's so lovely that you're taking the expertise that you have generated in your life through the through a lifetime of, of the service that you provide and the service that you're giving to, to everybody that's out there. And you've combined that with that value that you mentioned of that self-sustainability that you're not saying here's abundance for you. Uh, you can relax that you're still instilling that like, hey, you've got to contribute, you've got to grow, you've got to sustain yourself. This will make some things ease as you're taking on a different burden. Absolutely love it. Ben, uh, it's been such a delight, again, to have this conversation. I know Feel Good Fathers are going to have a wonderful time listening to this interview and taking from it as they can. If they want to reach out to you, they want to get involved, they want to learn more about you, where can they find you? So probably easiest thing, Jay, is to, to email me at, at ben at the IATeam.com. They can just reach out to me there um, through my, uh, or, or just go to the, the IATeam.com uh, website where they, they, can, they can reach out to me. I'm always happy to talk with folks. And as, as I said, for next year in particular, you know, I, I've, I've focused enough on myself in the last couple of years and, you know, kind of building the business. And, you know, as everyone else was trying to do, survive through COVID, Make sure we're doing fine, you know, through and, and, and post COVID. Uh, next year, I want to focus a lot more on um, educating and, and, and providing as much value as I can to other people um, without any uh, without any expected gain. And so, I I, so I want to thank you for the opportunity to come on and, and talk a little bit because it, it, it helps. I, I learn every time I talk with you. Um, and so, uh, I just I, I want to thank you for thank you for that. Thank for you for all you're trying to bring to to fathers. Ben Green, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Hey, feel good fathers. Hit that like button to let YouTube know that you liked this video. Comment below with your thoughts and reactions to this interview. I really want to hear what you have to say. Now, as a personal brand strategist, I hear all the time about coaches, trainers, speakers, and authors doing the right thing, but at the wrong time. We specialize in helping brand builders have more impact, more credibility and clarity and developing an overall brand strategy. When you work with Brand Builders Group, we'll help you do the right thing at the right time. Request a free brand call below. There's a link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe. You'll get updates when the new episodes are launched and it really helps out the community and the channel. We'll see you next time.